Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about the properties of the unilateral Z-transform. The properties of the unilateral Z-transform are the same as the properties of the bilateral Z-transform, with the exception of time shifting. So it's only when we talk about time shifts that we have to really worry whether we're doing a UZT or a VZT. So let's look at this. The time shift property, when we are delaying, which is the same thing as saying shifting to the right, this property says that for the unilateral Z-transform, which deals with signals that always look like this, we assume we have this unit step here that turns them on at time zero. In the time domain, if we shift to the right, which means n is some positive number, we've shifted this to the right, but we're still chopping it off at time zero, what happens in the Z-domain? Well, what happens in the Z-domain is this over here. We end up with x to the negative n, plus x to the negative n plus 1 times z to the minus 1. If you just plug this into the definition, you're going to get this list. This is the k equals 0 term, so z to the minus 0 is just z to the 0, which is z to the, one, z to the 0, which is 1. So we just get that term, plus this times the k equals negative 1, z to the negative 1, plus dot dot dot, all the way up to minus n plus 1, all the way up to minus n. So if you just write out the string of polynomials with the different weights, this is what you get, and you can see this looks very similar to the original Z-transform. I actually have X of Z sitting right here. There's an X of Z sitting right there, except it's 1 over Z to the N. That's the Z to the minus N. And then I have these other terms right here that account for all the values of my discrete time signal that have been shifted into time greater than or equal to 0. So things that used to be negative time, there's actually n samples that used to be negative time, have now been shifted into k equals 0 and greater positive time. So what happens is these shifted in values are right here, and then my original transform has been multiplied by z to the negative n. So when dealing with the UZT, when we do a time shift, we have to account for the n values that get shifted into positive time, and the way we account for those is with this term right here, and we are left with the original z transform just multiplied by z to the negative amount of the delay. So this is for right shifts. So this accounts for things that get shifted into positive time. We have something similar for things when we left shift and that's what we'll get to in just a minute. But before we do that, let's actually talk about some very specific cases. The previous chart talked about general n. Let's actually write out those definitions for some concrete values of n. So what if I delay my signal by 1? Well, I end up with my original z transform times z to the negative 1 plus x at time minus 1. So this is that value that's been shifted in that used to not exist. I have to tack that on here. What about when I shift to the right by 2? So if I have x of k minus 2, but it's still limited starting at time 0. Well, we know the rule. I write down x of z, I multiply by z to the negative 2, and now I have to tack on two values to account for those two values that popped into positive time. So there's z to the negative 1 times x at time minus 1 plus x of minus 2. And we can do one more. What about n equals 3? So what about when I shift my signal by 3? Well, I'm going to have x of z times z to the negative 3, and then I need three values over here. And you can see the pattern. I have z to the negative 2 times x at minus 1. These always add up to negative 3. z to the negative 1 times x at minus 2. These always add up to a negative 3, and then x of 3. So this kind of gives you the pattern for how to apply the unilateral z-transform when you're dealing with shifted signals. And shifted signals are the types of signals we tend to deal with in difference equations. So that's why this particular property is useful. Okay, so that was right shift. Let's go ahead and talk about left shifts. So when we shift to the left, we're actually pulling things forward in time, which you can think of as a time advance. So in this example here, n is greater than or equal to zero. So x of k plus n is shifting things to the left or advancing them in time. So if you actually just took this and wrote out the definition again, you would end up with this string of polynomials, uh, a polynomial in z with different factors, and it turns out that one of those factors is actually our original x of z times z to the n. So this should look familiar. It's almost just like we had last time. Instead of z to the minus n, though, we have z to the n. And then I have to account for all of these terms. So when I shift to the left, I'm shifting things that used to be in positive time back to negative time. 
So I need to get rid of those. So I need to get rid of all those things that this shifted out. So again, this looks very similar to what we started with, plus all these terms that have shifted out of positive time into negative time. So this bullet summarizes what's happening as we do this time shift with the unilateral Z-transform. It looks just like the bilateral Z-transform, except for these extra terms that account for what has either shifted out of, in this case with advances, or shifted into, in the case of our right shifts, um, due to the time shift. So again, let's specialize this now for concrete values of n. So when n is equal to 1, x of k plus 1 in the z domain looks like this. So it's our original z transform times z to the 1 minus z times x of 0. For n equals 2, I end up with x of z times z squared and then two terms to account for the two terms that have shifted out of positive time. k equals 0 has been shifted to the left 2. So it is at time minus 2, and x of 1 has been shifted to the left, so it's at sitting at time minus 1. I need to get rid of those because they've been shifted out. And then same thing for n equals 3. I have x of z times z cubed, and then three terms to account for the three things that have gotten shifted out of positive time. So this is really the only difference in terms of properties of the unilateral z transform. The bilateral and the unilateral are the same other than these properties, and we have now reviewed the only different one, and we now know how to use it. As I mentioned just a second ago, this type of operation when you're advancing or um, delaying a signal happens often when you deal with difference equations. Remember, a difference equation is just a time domain description of a system, often, and how you go about solving a difference equation, there's different ways to do that. We've already talked about how to do it in the time domain in this class. Now that we know the unilateral z-transform and this time shift property, we can use this property to deal with difference equations. Instead of solving them in the time domain, we can transform it into the z domain, do all of our math in the z domain to solve for the system output given the input and the transfer function of the system. So that's what we'll do next. We'll turn our attention to examining difference equations and getting them into the z domain to solve them using our z domain techniques.